So as you all know, Pacific Rim was my favorite movie of 2013. So naturally, when they announced the sequel on Friday, I was so pumped and so excited. But since I had to sit through this perpetual piece of assness that was somehow able to make $100 million, I, wasn't, I didn't get a chance to do a video on that. So I decided that for my Pacific Rim 2 official announcement video, I'm going to include the five things Pacific Rim 2 needs to be successful. So without further ado, let's chew title scene. Things. First up, Pacific Rim won't be opening till April 6th, 2017, and a lot can happen from now. So in four years, don't go back to this list and start checking things off. I don't know what the Hollywood industry is going to be like by then. I don't know what's going to change in society. So this is the list of how things look right now uh, at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So take everything I say here with, with a sense of reason to it. And two, these are not the things I want the movie to have to be good. In fact, the movie probably doesn't need any of these things to be good. It needs good writing and a stable production. But these are the things I think the movie needs to make money. Even though the film did make enough to warrant a sequel, it, it got by, by the skin of its teeth. And these are the things that, realistically, if the studio's going to want more money and Guillermo's going to want to make a bigger movie, these are the things I feel the film has to do just solely to get it off the ground. So without further ado, COMMENCE THE KAIJU! <laughs> Now, before I go any further, let me make this clear. I loved the whole cast of Pacific Rim. I love Ron Perlman, I love Idris Elba, I love Charlie Hunnam, but realistically speaking, those aren't names that really bring people in. Now, even though, yeah, it gets annoying seeing the same people in the same roles over and over again, it's going to help with the general public. Not everyone is like me and a big mech fan to begin with, so getting people into a movie like this isn't always easy. One thing that brings a lot of people into, say, crazy movies like comic book films or big sci-fi epics is the cast. When they, when they did the first Superman movie, casted both Gene Hackman and Marlon Brando, very serious actors, gave the film some legitimacy. This also doesn't have a big franchise with it, so when you get something like Star Trek, which also didn't have a lot of big names, it was okay because it's fucking Star Trek. But the thing is, is that you're going to need to get people invested in what they want to see. And a lot of times your cast can do that. Since it's a big sci-fi epic, people aren't going to care too much for the cast anyways, so by putting in a big name, you attract that actor's fan base. That's why movies like After Earth or The Other Woman market their two big names so much, even though the movies turn out being shit, because they have that people, and that will always bring people in. Stick a Tom Cruise or a Will Smith in this movie, and you're going to get that fan base no matter what. You're also going to get their haters, but the, it's better than people just going, looks like a stupid toy movie. In the press release, Guillermo said the whole crew's coming back. That means Raleigh Beckett, Mako, Newt, and probably Ron Perlman's character. Now, I enjoyed these characters. They were fun and exciting, but they weren't deep. They weren't meaningful. I know a lot of people who didn't like the movie because the characters were so simplistic and goofy. I didn't mind this because I've seen a lot of mech things that tend to go way too far with how dramatic they make the characters and it just hurts the show and movie as a whole. But realistically, there is room for these characters to grow. They need arcs. They need stories. But the first movie was kind of like the sports movie concept of like the old veteran, um, the rookie, the guy who thinks he's at the top of his game. That's all fine, but you need this movie to continue their stories. There needs to be a reason for why Raleigh's still here and we're not getting somebody new. So if you're going to keep the returning cast, give them something to do. Don't let them just be vehicles for why they need to pilot vehicles. And everybody know the story of David and Goliath, but this is bigger than Trump. This is for the worry of this. The problem that wasn't totally a big thing, but some people did have, was that too much of the fighting was out in the ocean. I like this because it led for some breathtaking beautiful imagery, but I understand where people are coming from. For a lot of people, there wasn't as much of a sense of scale as they would have wanted. Even though we did get that awesome city fight, a lot of people would have liked if we had more of an exuberant location. The ocean's awesome, Hong Kong's awesome, but for Pacific Rim 2, let's go out into the world. It was so fascinating seeing how the kaiju had influenced society and seeing that church made from a kaiju skeleton and all that stuff. 
For the new movie, let's see how this has affected the rest of the world. We don't need to go to New York or Paris or anything like that, but let's get a bigger, broad sense of location. Let's improve the size of this world, and because of this, we can try out new kaiju designs, not just aquatic. Maybe we could have desert-based ones, mountain-based ones. Opening up a new location allows you to basically do whatever you want, and it's going to lead into this next thing. Gypsy Danger is fucking awesome. So are all the kaiju. But if we're doing a sequel, you've got to do something new. That's what I've been talking about with everything else. You need a new plot, new story, a continuation. But most importantly, you need to have new awesomeness. The mechs were destroyed at the end of Pacific Rim. There's no way around that. Gypsy Danger and all that have been destroyed. And Del Toro's already said they're working on designs for, Pacific, for Gypsy Danger Mark II. But one thing that has me interested is they're also talking about doing a mech-kaiju hybrid. And that could be really fascinating for the film as well. And in order to do that, you need to have designs that are new and reflect the way you're going. One thing I loved is that you look at all the Jaegers in the movie, and they all replicate the time periods they were made. The G11 looked really old, and the Gypsy Danger was somewhere in the middle, and when you get to Striker Eureka, it looks basically beautifully brand new. Which makes sense, because it was brand new. Keep this going. Show how the mech technology progresses and becomes even stronger. And also show how the kaiju are progressing. If you're doing kaiju Jaeger hybrids, you need it to look something like this. Something that looks very monstrous, but still showcases that, that they are metal and that they do have robotics in them, no matter whose side they're on. As much as I loved everyone from the first movie, I was happy seeing them die, and I don't just want to see rehashes of the same action scenes. For most people, this sounds pretty stupid. It sounds fairly obvious, and a lot of people do point out that marketing has hurt big movies like Spider-Man 2 and Transformers. You'd be right. But! There's a difference between over-marketing and no marketing at all. If they do everything I've brought up so far, and if they do it all perfectly, it's not going to mean shit if they don't market this movie. There was no marketing for the first Pacific Rim. Yeah, there was some posters every now and again. Yeah, we saw a couple TV spots. There was nothing to bring people in. For every one person who saw Pacific Rim and loved it, and for every one person who saw Pacific Rim and hated it, there was a dozen people who had never even heard that this movie was coming out. A decade or two ago, something like this, everyone would have gone to see it. But now, in a world of superhero movies and other big franchises taking over, the little guys like this need to be known. You can't rely on just the fact that, oh, it's mech or it's anime-ish to market a movie. To market a film, there needs to be commercials, there needs to be trailers, product tie-ins, restaurant tie-ins. Even though this can go too far, and believe me, it has, especially the past couple of years, a little bit of it can only help. Get people curious about this movie. Get kids wanting to see this movie. If you want people to see the movie, they need to know it's out. And they need to know there's a reason where, for a lot of people, the economy is still hurting. To go out and risk spending 12 to, if you're a big family, almost 100 bucks just to go to the movies. Give people that reason, because I honestly believe that this movie could be something that makes people want to go to the movie. Specific Room was awesome and amazing. We've got to recapture that, but you need to keep things moving forward and improve on your mistakes. And what mistakes did you see? In the comment section below, tell me what you think this movie needs to be successful, or just what you want to see in it in general. Everything's open. This is an open discussion topic. Feel free to say whatever you want. And as always, click to like and click to subscribe because if I'm still reviewing in four years' time, you know I'm talking about this one.